especially if they see that you're a foreigner, mm. they will always try to charge a little bit more. You know? If I was from the outside looking in, I would say housing is definitely one of the biggest issues that people yeah, are, are having a hard issue. time with. Uh, I even know guys who do like 5k a month wow. working in call centers, you know? What about in terms of healthcare? Like, how's the, how, what, are there good centers for foreigners here? We've kind of been talking to expats and listening in in groups and figuring out where expats are having the most challenges in Albania, and we're trying to fill that gap. So we help people find apartments for the price they're supposed to pay, yeah. not for all the extra fees and fucking bullshit that they're gonna try to get. If they, not for the price that the foreigners usually take them, you know, mm -hmm. from the real estate agents. Let's talk about that. So the real estate agents, what what's the, they, they do make a lot of money, extra money on the foreigners. So uh, it happens, it happens a lot that uh, when they uh, hear that uh, the person who is gonna enter a house is a foreigner, mm -hmm. they usually tend to uh, raise the prices, you know, because they earn uh, on commissions, you mm -hmm. know, and the, the higher the commission, the higher they earn. Yeah, you know? of course. It doesn't always happen. No, some people are honest, yeah, right. It, it happens sometimes. And, you know, we also can have everything in place when you arrive, which is another hassle, because if you don't have the, that waiting for you, you're doing the Airbnb game. And here I can tell you the Airbnbs are like 50% more expensive than renting a property. Yeah. Like we paid $700 oh. a week for some bullshit for two weeks. Seven hundred dollars in Bloku, and it was cool. It was clean, but it wasn't yeah, worth. Yeah, but it's it's a lot. Yeah, tripping, it's a lot. Tripping seven hundred dollars. Get the fuck out of here. So I really feel like what we're doing is is quite helpful. If you actually intend to stay here, uh, we we get you set up with a housing for the prices you're supposed to pay. We get you picked up at the airport, taken directly to the apartment. If you need your internet already set up. Can, we can do that, right? Like, yeah, for sure. So, like, what's um, what, what at the moment? What companies do you guys have out here for internet? What are, what are the main the companies? The ISPs. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we have the Al Telecom, which is the like the national uh, uh, company. Let's call it this way. We right. have the uh, one. Uh, we we also have Vodafone, and we also have some uh, like smaller companies okay. which are which are uh, to be honest th the smaller companies are way better than the bigger ones yeah for yeah, sure yeah. for sure so you have a lot of options for internet here yeah totally do you know anything about the speeds that are available i'm not very informed about this part but, but you can upgrade and have yeah, high yeah, speed internet yeah, like totally, we, we totally. pay a little bit more i think we pay 25 dollars a month and, and, it, and it works out to be like enough to do live streams and we haven't had any problems with it, with like interruptions during the streams like it's more or less good enough um, another challenge will be if you're not coming on a US passport you only have three months to be here so if you actually do want to stay in Albania and you come here and you want to get a nice lease for a year we can open an LLC and we work with we actually work with Neo's cousin on this yeah and we can also find like uh, jobs uh, through which uh, you can get residency uh, for at least one year and after a year you can do like uh, re uh, what's what's the word a renewal a renewal of the of the residency for another one year and so on um, we can also arrange jobs yeah like in call centers we've been That's discussing like a this. good idea yeah so let's talk a little bit about that so for some of you guys who are thinking about leaving your country for the first time but you don't have a whole lot of capital this could be kind of a way to get yourself a foothold in the Balkans and get started. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good opportunity. What's the average yeah. salaries? The call centers, the average salary is way higher than the average salary uh, for the, the other jobs. For like a regular it. job, right? Yeah, you can get about 600 uh, euros a month. And that's and before that's commission. Without, yeah, that's without the bonuses because it can go up to 1.5, 1.2, 1.7. Wow. I even know guys who do like 5K a month wow. working in call centers, you know, but they're working their they're hustling, yeah, they're yeah, hustling, they're, they're they're hustling, hustling. hard. Yeah. But see, unlike in, in a place like Vietnam where everything's kind of like built around a set frame of time. So it's like, even if you're a teacher over there, yeah, you're getting a good amount of money, but yeah. you're still an hourly worker. Whereas with the call center thing, it's almost more like it's your own business. You, they, they yeah, you work like five days a week. You have the Saturdays and the Sundays off. The salary is good, at least for the Albanian, uh, let's say, lifestyle. Uh, and all, you can also get bonuses. 
well, which are a plus, you know? Listen, it's good for expats too because if they have to supplement their income a little, 600 euros is not too bad a month if you include the yeah, bonuses. You leave, yeah, you can live here in Albania with 600 euros a month. You can totally live here. And if you're making another three, four $400 even in bonuses, you're more than comfortable here. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And that's going out and doing stuff too. So, I mean, to be honest, I think it's a, it's a really decent thing that we can offer you guys. Like we can give you a way to get a foot in the door and like if you do need to make a little bit of money. Yeah, um, that, that would be like a beginning, you know? Mm -hmm, exactly. Like, um, now, what languages are the most sought after here? Probably so English is one. English is one of them, but English has like uh, like uh, lower uh, salaries, it's a little bit lower than the let's say German ones, Spanish ones, Greek ones. We also uh, have uh, Arabic call centers, mm. call centers in the Arabian language. Right. They pay the highest. Yeah, Do they? they pay, wow. Yeah, they pay the highest. Interesting. Uh, also, uh, did I mention Greek? Yeah, language. you said the Greeks yeah, do it. Okay. Yeah, you, they have centers here also. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, guys. So this is a foot in the door if you want to do something in the Balkans. It's not as easy as English teaching. Like you can't just lay around and like fucking get paid to do nothing. But like you have an opportunity to make as much as you want. Depending yeah, you, on you how can hard. make a lot. You can make a lot through call centers. Yeah. And that's you know get you a foot in the door if you have an an idea for a business that you were trying to do somewhere in the Balkans. I mean, this is a nice place to be. So. Uh, I think what we're doing has a lot of value. I mean, we save people a lot of stress. Like you don't, you're not wasting money on expensive Airbnbs. You're not getting ripped off by the real estate agents. Yeah. We have the immigration lawyer. We can get everything started. Um, can we help with like countries that want tourist visas? Like if they can't get a tourist visa, can we help them with invitation letters and that type of stuff? Totally. Okay. Totally. Yeah, so yeah, if for you, sure. So if you guys have like a weaker passport, but you have capital, you know, you can reach out to us and we can arrange for invitation letters. Um, now that's not an invitation for a bunch of broke motherfuckers to message me because I'm sorry, like, you know, like for us to help you in any way, it's gonna be a minimum cost involved. So if you are a serious person who's serious about doing business in Albania and you need some assistance getting invited over here, like just reach out to us, we can help with that also. Um, if, especially if your passport's not that strong. If you're for coming from the US, it's, it's gonna be, you're just gonna walk into the country and then we don't really have to address your residency until eight or nine months later. Yeah, it's not a problem if you're from the US, but uh, if you're from other countries, it will be a problem. Right. It'll definitely be a problem. If you're even from Australia or Canada, like you yeah, need to yeah. start the process pretty it's like quickly. Like here in Albania, only the US has the, only the US citizens have the opportunity to uh, reside here for uh, one year. Yes. Without any reason at all, you know? Yes. And we can leave for, th for 90 days and then return again yeah, and get yeah, another yeah. year yeah so you could just in theory you, if you didn't want to do residency and you just wanted us to set you up out here what we could probably easily do was you do a year in albania then you just cross the border into greece and you do 90 days in greece and then you just come back and, and do another year back, in yeah. albania or you know you have montenegro kosovo i, I had a good time in uh in skopje a lot of my albanian friends say skopje is boring but i'm like it is boring. I'm old. <laughs> I like can sit and work on my shit and like focus on my business for because it's so quiet. Yeah, it, it depends on what kind of person you are or what are you dealing with. You yeah, know? there's not much to do and it feels empty, doesn't it? It's yeah. big and empty. But I liked it. I, I liked it. It was cool. But I mean, it's not that lively, you know. No, the Tirana, Tirana. Yeah, compared to Tirana, normally. Tirana's the Tirana New York. Colors. It's lively, friendly. Mm -hmm. Tirana's yeah. the city, the New York of the Balkans. Ah, you can. I think you can call it that way. I would say so. Either you, either Tirana or Belgrade. I mean, those are the two probably. I the haven't most been to Belgrade. Big, so, big city, yeah. subway, something. Yeah, it would be one of these two. Areas, yeah. Either you guys are there. Um, I can, you know, because what, Skopje, Pristina, these are not cities. Yeah, smaller, smaller cities. For, they're not huge, you know. Yeah. What I think, I think, uh, what is it, uh, Pristina is only a few hundred thousand people, yeah. something like that. But I've heard Kosovo is nice. Have you spent time in Kosovo? I've spent time in Kosovo and it's pretty nice if you go to like Prizren, to Pristina, which are like the main cities yeah. there. But the other, the other towns are more for like, if you like history and culture, mm. if you like nature and stuff like that, you know, you can go there. But they are not for, uh, let's say, young people who want to have fun and celebrate sure. and stuff like that. You know? Well, how, how many people are in prison? I'm not sure right now, but, but, uh, but I would say... Much smaller than Pristina. Yeah, way smaller. So, and they're both not really that big of no. cities. So really, if you guys are going to come to the Balkans, I think Tirana is the logical place. I mean... Place to stay, yeah. You've to got... Reside. 
international airport here. This is where I think you can find the most conveniences probably in services. Yeah. And it's a lively city, man. It's always moving. Toronto is like alive. So what are some of the other problems you think that foreigners could face coming out here if they didn't know how things work in Albania? So first of all, the areas, the public transportation, the uh, okay, the driving skills. Of getting from city to city. Okay, the getting from city to city would be a little would be a little bit of a hassle because we don't have like timetables and we don't have much information about the intercity. Not not only the intercity, but even inside of Tirana, you don't have much information about when a bus will come, where it will go, you know, and mm. the people there do not even speak English. Uh, no one is there to help, you know, it's a little bit difficult to move around. I'm going to do a video if on the bus station. If you don't know, the, yeah, you should, prob you should probably do I'm that. I'm going to, yeah. Yeah, you should do that. Yeah, so the bus station is wild. Yeah. It, it's a cool place, it's crazy, but just make sure you use the bathroom before you get there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say... Um, that's one thing we can also offer you guys is like we can demystify a lot of that like Neo is gonna kind of take you under his wing like you're his child and ra <laughs> raise you you know what I'm saying like he's, he's gonna nurture you and like yeah I mean it's it's always better if you have a local with you you know who yeah. knows uh, all the areas who knows well, you can people have, around you know you can arrange drivers right like yeah, you can, so sure. so guys like if you want to go to a different city and you don't want to have to pay some of these guys are stupid they'll try to charge you a hundred fucking euros yeah. to go to fucking city to city out here and especially if they see that you're a foreigner mm. they will always try to charge a little bit more you know but I to found make a few extra bucks oh, I found like side. 40 bucks for, for like like 40 dollars from like uh, Barat to here Forty dollars. Or no, sorry, no, it was sixty. Sixty, and then forty. Where was it? Forty from Korcha. It was forty-five from Korcha to here. Forty-five from Korcha. Yeah, to here. but a lot of the cab companies were trying to charge me a hundred fucking really? euros. Oh, They're like, right. everyone was like, a hundred euros, hundred euros. We talked to the lady yeah. we were staying with, and we're like, yo, can you call some people for us? Boom, forty-five dollars. He was okay. out, he was fucked. He was crazy. He was like parking the car halfway in the yeah, highway. Yeah, I know, I know the case. So. Yeah, but he got us there cheap. Yeah, so if you know someone around, uh, you can uh, you can always call someone who, uh, let's say in this in this case, the guy was going from Korcha to Tirana anyway, you right. know, and uh, the the person who called him and said, "I have two people who want to come with you." Let's make some money. Yeah, let's yeah, make some yeah. money. You know, and it's way cheaper than uh, if you took like a traditional cab. You know? So we're not going to go out and necessarily. So if you know if you know a few people, you can do things for for cheaper. So we're not going to go out and necessarily get you the crackhead driver. What we're going to do is we'll get you yeah. something in the middle where you maybe you're going to pay more than I paid, but you're going to get a better service and you're not going to pay as much necessarily as you would pay dealing yeah. with the taxi directly. Yeah. And it's the same. We we just set up the fellow who just moved in from California. We set him up with an apartment. They, they're paying way under market value for that. Like that's a nice deal. They got like a three bedroom for the price I'm paying for a two. So I mean, you know, guys, there's a there's a definite value. We can get things set up for you. We can get you on your feet in Albania. Um, probably, if, if I was from the outside looking in, I would say housing is definitely one of the biggest issues that people yeah, are, are having a hard time here. with here. Like yeah. finding that expat apartment they want, you know. Yeah, yeah. And also the problem with the real estate is that uh, since things are rapidly changing here in Tirana, it, Tirana is like uh, so. The uh, whole of Albania is like a developing country, you know. Yeah. And the prices are going. Uh, you can find like the same apartments in the same areas, and one you can find for way cheaper than the other. You mm. know, there are some bullshit like that going on. Right. You know. You have to, to you have to to be informed on uh, on everything before you go out there and start finding for for something. You know? Right, and that was the biggest thing is he negotiated on the behalf of our customers in Albania and with Albanian people. Yeah, we managed to get like a small reduction on that. But he knows how to talk to them, and they're not going to try to play a game with him the way that they would try to play a game with you necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Because they know that he's from here and that he's not going to put up with that. So, I mean, this is just another advantage. We can have the internet waiting for you. There's a bunch of different telecom companies. Can we set up? We can we set them up with apartments in different cities? Like if they want to go live by the coast, can we uh, fix? Yeah, we can yeah. Fix At it least up? in the Saranda, in Vlora, uh, in Berat, for sure. Those are the main ones, guys. Yeah, I mean, and in Shkodra, you can find something in yeah. Korcha. Yeah. Okay, so then basically I people anywhere. I know 
basically everywhere in Albania. So everywhere. So you come out, you get with us. We connect you to our Albanian partners. We can do the residency. We can do the housing, transportation. Um, can you help them find like like things they might need to find? Like if they needed to find like I don't know, like for example, like computer parts or. Yeah, you know, for camera sure. equipment. For sure, for like sure, you can sure. show them where they need yeah. to go. So this is all. We're just gonna make it like a service for you guys who don't want to deal with anything. You just want to come to Albania. Everything's already taken care of. Any problem that could arise, there's a way we can fix it. Yeah, we're gonna help you with with everything. We'll, and also, I think what's most important, we're gonna uh, show them uh, and teach them how things work around here. You know, because every country. Uh, in every country things happen in a certain way you know? right right and that's valuable and I think I think that what we're doing is really gonna make the process of you coming to Albania more comfortable less stressful less to worry yeah, yeah. about um, because for some people they don't give a shit they just want to show up and stay in a hostel yeah, and, yeah but there are people who are like seriously like looking at leaving America or Canada or Australia because of the insanity with the fucking inflation and the insane lockdowns and you now now they're talking yeah. about bringing in these COVID passports and restricting people's ability to move and countries like Albania it's just not like that here at all it's uh, yeah. they, what, what are the current restrictions do you know are there any because so, uh, like officially, officially. Yeah, like officially. Uh, so I, I, I will say the only restriction that there is, uh, it's that at 11 p.m. everyone must go in. You know, yeah. all, the, all the businesses get closed. Do they you know? really, or do people just close their door and stay? Some open? of them, some of them close. Most of them. Most close, of them but close. Okay. Uh, there are places you can go even after uh, even after eleven. Right. Okay. And you should uh, put the mask on when you are in like uh, play uh, indoor places. Right. But that doesn't uh, doesn't work at all. You know. Yeah, I noticed nobody yeah, does it. Nobody, nobody does, does it. it even, even like I do it in the supermarkets because I know technically you're supposed to. Yeah, technically. Yeah. So yeah. I so I just do it because fuck it, it's safer anyway in a crowded supermarket. But I notice that nobody else does. Yeah. So it's it, more like a formality, you know. Yeah. So don't freak out, guys. If you're coming from a horror show like Southeast Asia, like like Vietnam right now, where you're in this nightmarish police state. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, you're, it's not the like that quite here. the opposite here. It's very cool. It's way more, way more free as a country uh, it is really it is what about in terms of healthcare? like how's the how what are there good centers for foreigners here can we help them get connected to people who can provide health insurance and health insurance and stuff yeah yeah for sure uh, what I would suggest is that uh, uh, you should always uh, pick as the first uh, as the first option the private hospitals no, no doubt. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, I, I lived the, in Vietnam. Not the, pub, not the public ones. <laughs> it's not that at the public ones you won't get any service, mm. but uh, the private ones are way better, you know? Way in, better. in Vietnam, the guy might just be drunk. Like, yeah, you, 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 <laughs> okay, that won't, that won't happen. No, that's good. But uh, there are some, you know, some advantages of going yeah, at the of course. private uh, but is it? Ex hospitals. But from what I've heard, it's not that expensive here, and that if you have decent local health insurance, it covers a lot of the private places. Yeah, yeah. And that it's not expensive. So guys, like literally any problem you could possibly face, we can deal with it. Like almost any, you know, yeah, like almost everything. You know, we sure. we can find a way to get you in the country if you don't have the strongest passport. But again, I'm gonna say this before: don't message me if you don't have capital. We're you know like we're serious. We want you to be serious. We have fun. We joke. We make we make you know fucking stupid yeah. comments in the YouTube. But ultimately. You know, my time is worth money, your time is worth money, and what we're trying to do is make your move to a different country a more of like a seamless and like efficient okay, it's process. It's like an expert relocation services minus the headache. Right, you know? right. You're not gonna have to put up with anything. There's not, it's just yeah, gonna be yeah. smooth. And for a yeah. certain type of person, who is a busy person who who has you know they don't want to deal with nothing they're making enough money they have the capital uh, then you know that's who we're looking to work with you know like unfortunately if you're super super broke and you're coming from a developing country it's probably not going to be very much that we can offer you you know if you're if you're coming from a developing country and you're very rich and you're one of these people who are similar to like an American we can probably provide you almost the same level of service but it's, it's mostly about how much money you have yeah at least uh, uh, you should have an initial sum I would say you know because without an initial sum you can you can do anything you know you can't come here like empty-handed and expect to 
to find an apartment, you know, find a car and everything. You know? Yeah, so like Bangladeshi workers don't need to be messaging me, but what? But Bangladeshi investors maybe, yeah, you know Albania, what I mean? Or, or people is, uh, from Pakistan or Albania these countries. Albania is exploding right now. It's, yeah, it's a huge like place if, to invest. You know, like I, I just want to make that clear because I get a lot of messages a lot of times from people who are like, they don't have any money at all. And it's like, well, why would Albania let you in? Like, what's the incentive for Albania? Like, yeah, the, you know, like yeah. this country is not letting people in because, oh, gee golly, it's fun to let people in. They're letting people in because they're bringing either capital, investment, yeah, 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 you know, they sure. can fulfill a job that nobody else can fulfill. And it's a similar story in Vietnam. It's, it, it sucks because some of these countries are very interesting and I would like to visit some of these places in the world. But you have to be practical. And like, if you're gonna pick up and move to a place like, you know, Tirana is, is not as cheap as people think it is here. Like, it, yeah, if you it, want a comfortable it lifestyle. It's gotten expensive over, over the last couple of years. So what was it like before? You need a little so, dough. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna make a small comparison between the uh, rent prices in a certain area, mm. how they were and how they are now. Let's say, let's say at the Blackbird, at the Zoguzi, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there you, you could find uh, houses for rent there for 250 bucks, you know, mm. like a two plus one or, wow. a, or a good one plus one. That's really nice. Like 10 years ago. Today you can't do that. No, uh, no. Not at all. Like 400, 400 euros or 350, 300. 400, right. you know. Right. Yeah. So, so guys, like, listen, the, the capital amount, it's nothing like Vietnam. You, you don't need that much money to come out here and open a business. Yeah, you don't need that much money, you, definitely. You don't, but you need to at least have enough to open a yeah, business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you gotta, like, I, I would say if you're coming out here with six grand and you have a pretty structured business idea, you're fine. Yeah, or if you work online, you have if another you have income. like revenue, an income all the time, you know? Even you, if you have a small income, I think you can uh, live easily here in Albania. You could like, stretch it for a long yeah. fucking time. The only thing you're going to pay for in Tirana is housing. Yeah, housing is it's, it's the most expensive. Mm. It's, it's a little bit, uh, I don't know how to, how to explain this, but uh, uh, the prices of the houses and the rents and the apart and our apartments for sale mm. are uh, much higher than what they should be, you know? Right, they're Tirana inflated, they're inflated. inflated. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Tirana is uh, at the top 10 most expensive places to find an apartment. Right, right. And so it's next to Milan and Amsterdam, and that's that's huge. Well, it's normally compared to the cost of living here. And yeah, the, it's, and the it's salaries what and, people and earn right? versus the yeah, cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. That's what he's saying, guys. Yeah. It's not that it's like Milan. It's yeah. it's that it's like Milan versus what people earn. Yeah, yeah. So for the yeah. local people, it's fucking outrageously expensive. Yeah, people are complaining all the time because it's like the average wage here is it's like 300 350 euros and you have to pay 300 for the apartment and that's a lot you know yeah how do you do that yeah but people uh, usually live like three or four, four people, people together you know mm, yeah it sucks two, two people like cousins and stuff like that you know well, it's but different if it's friends or family and stuff but if it's yeah. like randoms like yeah it's a little bit difficult it sucks so guys you know you have a good situation out Still, here Still, if you have like uh, an income of 1k a month here mm. in Tirana you're, you're pretty you're pretty good well I was gonna say you have a good situation out here with any kind of Western income and if you're coming out here with like six or seven grand cash and you have enough to float working with us so that we can avoid you losing money and then maybe after working with us <laughs> like for even if we do the full LLC it's like under three grand for including my fee and getting everything set up yeah so it's it's not that expensive you still have like four or so grand left over if you have like a specific thing you're trying to do in Albania but bear in mind you know um, it's all dependent on what you're trying to fucking do yeah, yeah you know like if you just are, if you're coming here and you're just looking for an easy place to be well maybe we can fill you with the call center thing you know if you're coming here to do business and you have a lot of capital well then anything's possible here if you're coming here yeah. and you only have a little capital then you need to start looking outside of Tirana looking into smaller cities where like a couple grand could go really fucking far yeah, yeah. the rents are like uh, half or maybe even less exactly so there's all and, different and, ways and, uh, even here in Tirana in the let's say the outer areas of mm. the city the outer areas I mean the suburbs you know right not, which uh, I live in La Praga I've told you yeah. which is uh, you can you can uh, call it a suburb 
and it's like 15 minutes away from the city center you okay know? with a bus right you know? and what do you pay and i for the bus no for your house okay i have a private uh, house but uh, if you would live if you would live in Praga, you would pay like uh, 250 bucks something like that guys how are you gonna beat that it used to be 200 some years ago and you could even find for 150. do you like, need a car out there no I not, think really. So. not really you can uh, so uh, i've walked from my house to the city center and it's about half an hour oh not maybe bad. something not something less a little not bit bad. less and with the bus you'll have to to walk five minutes to the bus station and right. for 10 minutes you're at the city center yeah you might as well just walk so this is considered like uh, far away from the center right, right? Be right. because tirana is small it's, it's small it's yeah. small yeah, yeah it is about one million inhabitants mm. it is so dense. it's not a big city it's dense it though. is dense it yeah. is dense for in how small it is in some areas yes yeah, in for some sure. areas yes like uh it's it's an interesting place i've really liked it here so far so i think if you guys were thinking about escaping the madness in the west there's far fucking worse places yeah. you could come than albania like you know everything's open there's not a fucking police state we'll make sure you don't get ripped off in the apartment we'll make sure you get picked up at the airport so you don't deal with any shady taxi bullshit you'll just like pretty much pick you up like this dust you off drop you in your fucking apartment with your high speed internet yeah basically and, you know, basically that, that's it whatever else you need so if you think that that's something that would be valuable to you if you have some capital if you have a strong fucking passport you know give us a holler and even if you don't have a strong passport but you have capital we can figure yeah, that out too yeah. so uh, we also have the support of uh, like a big uh, legal company so I think that's that's a plus, you know. Now, so I don't want to obviously say anything about where they're located or who they are because that's what we're going to offer them. Yeah. But like, you know, they're they're one of the bigger law firms here. Yeah, in it's one of the top law firms here in Toronto. They work mostly with corporations, but I have people there. So Jay has met my cousin. Yeah, who works and there. one day we're going to definitely try to interview him too if he if he feel if he's allowed yeah, to because yeah, that would be really would interesting. Like that. And uh, just so, because I know he could answer he's, very specific he's questions. He's more shy of the cameras than, than I. Than you? He's yeah. more shy than him. He was very shy. So, listen, you know, this is not going to be any stress. It, it's going to be like, you just book your fucking flight out here and everything's cool. If there's a problem, we'll take care of it. So, if that sounds like it could be useful, shoot us a message. Hit us up on the Facebook fan page. You know, we got Instagram, we got WhatsApp, we got whatever the way you need to reach us. We'll set you up, we'll connect you to the partner over here, Neo, and we'll get you out of the matrix. You're not yeah. gonna be doing weird shit in lockdowns. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're not, here. you're not scanning QR codes to walk down the fucking street. Yeah, like. there are no cameras everywhere, you know. No. It's not like in some countries I've heard where you have cameras everywhere. No. Like everywhere. <laughs> Everybody's just chilling in cafes and you know, what are you doing? Yeah, the people are friendly, especially towards, uh, I think I've told you this before, mm. Albanians to Albanians, not friendly at all. Right. Albanians to foreigners, very, very friendly. friendly. Yeah. Right. So you're going to benefit from that. I don't know that. Why, why, that, why that happens, but it's, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that benefits you and that's the thing that can make it a more comfortable, nicer place to live. I mean, you go hiking real easy from the city. You got the beach real easy from the city. Yeah, in half an hour, you can be everywhere. You know, the beach, the mountain, a forest, a waterfall. Mm. I can take you to a lake in the middle of the mountains if you want, you know? Beautiful cafes. We can, you know, you got places to drink coffee. You got places to work <laughs> online. Um, we can definitely do the tours. We can, you know, you can arrange taking them to the crazy off the beaten path mountain places. and Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that can be done also. Anything that you guys really want to organize, just holler at us. And, uh, you know, you get to work with this uh, handsome gentleman. Yeah. He's single. Yeah, ladies, single. Ladies, you know, and uh, subscribe, share. If you guys are thinking about coming to Vietnam in the near future, I know the situation is pretty gnarly, but we can still help you get in. And if you want to come to Albania, this guy, he's going to make sure there's no problems. Yeah, I'm right here. Brush your teeth. What do you think of when you think of Albania? I think of opportunity. I think of a country that's open. I think of a country that wants long stay expats, that wants people to come and invest, wants new ideas, and is looking towards the West. I think that Albania is a beautiful country with incredible landscapes that can offer a very comfortable lifestyle at a very reasonable price. We at the White Monkey Syndicate will help navigate 
your journey to becoming an expat in Albania. We're working with some of the top lawyers in the city. We can help establish businesses. We can help you get your residency. We can help you get real estate. We can arrange almost any contact that you might need for the process of moving here in almost any city in the country. We will simplify the process. We'll make it a lot easier for you to move to a country that maybe in the past would have been more of a challenge. With our help, it's gonna be a walk in the park. Brush your face and wash your teeth, son. Hey, what's up? I'm Dee from Canada. Hook up with the New York Nomad if you want a smooth ride into Vietnam or any Southeast Asian countries. Hey, my name is Aaron. Get in contact with the New York Nomad. If you want to get into Vietnam, hit them up. They'll get you in securely and professionally. Yo, this is Uncle Hollywood. I'm telling you right now, the New York Nomad got me a job. He's legit. Hit him up. Check him out. New York Nomad set me up in Vietnam. <laughs> Yo, my man got me a job. Come to Vietnam. Hey, what's up guys? You thinking about coming to Vietnam? You're not sure where to start. You've heard a lot of things online. You don't know what's true. You don't know what's not. We offer a consulting service where we help you get on your feet in Vietnam. We give you advice on negotiating contracts with employers. We help you with real estate agents, visa agents that are reliable and that you can trust. And we help you get started in this amazing country and get on your feet. We help you get into different opportunities that might be more difficult for you if you were just landing in the country on your own. And we help you avoid a lot of the, the pitfalls and problems that you could have as a newcomer here. We provide you with reliable job recruiters, visa agents, real estate agents, and advice. If you guys are thinking about coming to Vietnam, hit us up for a consultation. We'll help you get started, help you get on your feet, and hopefully you'll love Vietnam as much as we do.